Hello, I'm Edward. Today we're delving into the harrowing conclusion of the Bonnie and Clyde's reign of terror that spanned across the United States in the early 1930s. The story unfolds from their early victims through the relentless attacks on law enforcement, the final string of murders leading up to the meticulous plot that culminated in a brutal ambush and ultimately their bullet-ridden finale. Welcome to our channel, Hushed Histories, revealing the secrets of bygone eras, early victims. During their short but tumultuous reign of crime from February 1932 to May 1934, Bonnie and Clyde left a trail of blood and sorrow in their wake, taking the lives of 12 individuals, including nine dedicated law enforcement officers. John Napoleon J.N. Buecher of Hillsboro, Texas, was the first known victim, murdered on April 30, 1932. As a store owner in Hillsboro, he met his end when he refused to comply with the duo's demands during a robbery, exhibiting a defiance that cost him his life. Deputy Eugene Capel Moore of Atoka, Oklahoma was their next victim, shot dead on August 5, 1932 in Stringtown, OK. Moore was attending a dance at a local pavilion when he was gunned down, his leisure time cruelly and abruptly cut short. Howard Hall of Sherman, Texas became their third victim on October 11, 1932. Hall, an innocent citizen, lost his life during a car theft gone awry, his misfortune being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Law Enforcement Under Siege Doyle Johnson of Temple, Texas, was murdered on December 26, 1932. Johnson was shot when he tried to prevent the Clyde from stealing his car from his driveway on a Christmas night, a grim reminder of the duo's remorseless deeds. Deputy Malcolm Davis of Dallas, Texas, met a similar fate on January 6, 1933. He was responding to a burglary call when he crossed paths with the Barrow Gang his duty leading him to his end. Detective Harry Leonard McGinnis and Constable John Wesley Wes Harriman of Joplin, Missouri were both killed on April 13, 1933. Caught in the crossfire of a police shootout, their attempt to enforce law and order cost them their lives. Town Marshal Henry Dallas Humphrey of Alma, Arkansas was gunned down on June 26, 1933, when he attempted to arrest the pair in Alma a testament to their fearlessness in the face of law enforcement. Final String of Murders Major Joseph Krausen, a prison guard at Huntsville, Texas, was killed on January 16, 1934. He was shot during a daring jailbreak by the Clyde, highlighting their increasingly brazen actions. Patrolman Edward Brian Ed Wheeler and H.D. Murphy of Grapevine, Texas, were both shot on April 1, 1934, while on duty, a tragic loss for the law enforcement community. The final known victim was Constable William Calvin Cal Campbell of Commerce, Oklahoma. He was shot and killed on April 6, 1934, when he encountered the Barrow Gang during a routine patrol, his routine duty turning fatal in an instance. The final string of murders underscored the need for the law enforcement's relentless pursuit, paving the way for the bloody ambush. The plot to end. In the spring of 1934, as the pair continued their reckless rampage, law enforcement officials were tirelessly plotting their demise. Frank Hamer, a former Texas Ranger known for his cunning and bravery, was tasked with tracking down the duo. He assembled a posse of lawmen from Louisiana and Texas, crafting a plan that capitalized on a tip from Ivy Methvin, father of Henry Methvin, a member of Bonnie and Clyde's gang. The information was invaluable. Bonnie and Clyde were to visit Bienville Parish, Louisiana, a place they felt was safe due to Henry's family connections. The ambush. The ambush was set for May 23, 1934, on a rural road in Bienville Parish. The lawmen, heavily armed and with nerves of steel, lay in wait as dawn approached. Ivy Methvin, the father of one of the gang members, had strategically positioned his truck on the side of the road, a lure intended to draw in the notorious pair. As the sound of an approaching vehicle punctured the morning stillness, the posse readied themselves. It was the Ford V8, driven by Clyde Barrow. He slowed down as anticipated, then, without waiting for any command, Oakley fired the first shot. In an instant, Clyde was struck in the head by Oakley's initial shot and killed instantly. The chilling scream of Bonnie Parker reverberated in the air as she witnessed Clyde's immediate demise. The bullet-ridden finale. 
The rest of the posse followed suit, and a sudden cacophony of gunfire erupted, echoing eerily across the empty landscape as about 130 rounds were pumped into the moving car. Their automatic rifles were emptied even before the car reached their position. They then resorted to their shotguns, firing ceaselessly as smoke began billowing from the bullet-ridden car, making it appear as if it was on fire. Even as the car veered off the road and nearly overturned in a ditch about 50 yards away, the gunfire didn't cease. It was a ghastly sight. The car, riddled with approximately 112 bullet holes, a testament to the officer's relentless barrage. Barrow's body bore 17 entrance wounds, while Parker's was marred by 26, including multiple headshots and one that had severed Barrow's spinal cord. Their bullet-riddled bodies served as a chilling epilogue to their notorious reign of crime. Their final moments marked by a hailstorm of gunfire on a quiet rural road. We chronicled the fatal journey of Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow, portraying their grim legacy through the lens of their victims, escalating violence, and the law enforcement's relentless pursuit that culminated in a deadly ambush. We hope you've enjoyed the video and encourage you to share your thoughts, additional facts, or any fascinating stories about the topic in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on this captivating voyage into the world of hushed histories.